Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. Ah, yeah, you know what it is. Hard worker, scrappy, unfiltered, and sometimes unhinged football content. Hard to explain, but you know it when you see it. Doing it daily, our way. I don't know what you're talking about right now. Redraft and Dynasty Fantasy Football, we got you covered. You know their defense is ranked like 31st in the NFL? NFL draft prospects and rookies? Now you know you're in the right place for that. Absolutely. All right, then stop saying it. Then we're done. And prop bets with my man Jay Rich. Count that money, man. Now wipe the crust out of your eyes. Get you a cup of coffee. It's time to wake your ass up with Ray G. You honestly are making absolutely no sense and you sound silly as hell. G M G P. Welcome in, everybody. Happy Monday, March 25th, 2024. Y'all decided to wake y'all asses up. Ray G. I appreciate y'all being in the damn building. I see my man Rico Stone in the building. What's happening with you, John, Jackie Moon, Devon, Mickey C, Jonas, TP, Leo Scott, Gump in the building, man. Gump out there giving out a lot of underdog promo picks over on X. Make sure you tap in with Gump, 872.85. Who else we got in the building? Emilio, my girl Gretchen. Good morning. How are you, DD fam? Yes, yeah, sunshine. It's raining like crazy cats and dogs out here in Dallas, Texas. But James, we too are hype, hype, hype. Welcome in, everybody. I hope everybody had a fantastic freaking weekend. If you weren't tapped into the channel last night, Scott Connor and I, you see it right there back on the TV. 2024 rookie mock, single quarterback, half PPR, 1.5 tight end premium. Make sure you tap into Destination Chill from last night. He also dropped Destination Dynasty today. Going over the 2024 rookie class, talking about wins over replacement, above replacement, using the war tool. Make sure you're tapped into everything that Destination Debbie has cooking. And Jay Rich, you already know, baby, my brother from another mother. He's coming to the screen and here in a second. The NFL Draft, April 25th through 27, DD has you covered. We're going live. We're streaming day one, day two, and the entire day three. So make sure you set your calendars, mark the date, and go to Underdog Fantasy. Use the promo code DDD. Get entry into the DD giveaway. We're giving away over 10 jerseys, player trading cards, roster reviews, and five-year-long subscriptions to the highest tier in our Discord, the Heisman tier. So go over, Underdog Fantasy. I don't care if you got to use your wife's account, your kid's account, your cousin, your uncle, your nephew, your niece, your auntie. Make sure you use promo code DDD. You get access to the giveaway. You're going to get entry into everything that we're doing. And you will also get a free draft guide brought to you by Destination Debbie. That's right. The draft guide drops this year. Jordan Backus and Shane Manila working their asses off on the back end to get you that, 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 that never too late, that way too late rookie draft guide from Destination Debbie to have you covered for fantasy football purposes. But. Jay Rich, how you doing, man? How was your weekend, big dog? Get on the screen. How you doing, baby? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad someone noticed you wearing the D Wade Marquette jersey. I mean, yeah. if it wasn't D Wade, then I really wouldn't know who it was. But shout out to Marquette still in the tournament. But yeah, man, the weekend was good. Um, it was snowing a little bit here, which was a bit of a change of pace from the weather we've had more recently in the Northeast. But otherwise, it's been good. You know, I was sick last week. Feel much yes. better now. Everyone was uh, on us last show. Apparently, we were a little combative going at each other a little bit. I mean, it just That's what family some does, fun, right? right? That's what yeah, family. I'm glad you're feeling better because you did oh, feel yeah, like really crap good. start last oh, yeah. week. You felt bad. It's a rough week for you, but I'm glad you're feeling better. Got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about today. NFL world never sleeps, Jay Rich. No. So there were a couple of, not, not big, but there were a few little news items that, that we must hit and talk about. We had one out of Kansas City. There was a lot of news and rumors about their Pro Bowl cornerback, Legereus Sneed, and would he stay a Kansas City Chief? They tagged him. He's going to get traded. He's going to come back. Ultimately, Legereus Sneed was dealt to the AFC South Tennessee Titans. Jay, what was the compensation on that Sneed what? trade? He was traded for a 2025 third-round pick and a 2024 seventh-round pick swap. So basically, they got Legereus Sneed for a 2025 third-round pick, plus his extension that he will be owed once they finalize that deal. Definitely interesting, Ray. The Titans continue to spend with their questionable roster at best. Mike Vrabel, a coach who wanted to win, to play, to win games, to compete. They fire him, and now they're out spending all this money, bringing in Calvin Ridley, bringing in C, bringing in offensive linemen. 
It's very, very strange, but we'll see how it works out for them. The AFC South is obviously a very competitive division now with CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans looking great. And the Jacksonville Jaguars still trying to figure it out as a team, but that division is much more competitive. And you can't even forget about the, about the Colts, who are also on the ascension with Anthony Richardson coming back. So the Titans want to stay competitive. I don't know if it's going to work, Ray. How do you feel about Snead, though, heading to the Titans? I think it's a good pick. I mean, you saw uh, Jeffrey Simmons, their all-pro defensive tackle, say, thank God, some secondary help. They lost Kevin Byard. You know, Caleb Farley, their first-round pick a couple of years ago, has been injured and, and battle-tested. So I think this is a veteran move. They need some secondary help in that Badly. division with Anthony Richardson, with Trevor Lawrence, with C.J. Stroud. I think it was a good move by Tennessee, and I know you think they're spending haphazardly. They're trying. They, they are trying to stay competitive and relevant. So I'm not going to knock the Tennessee Titans for that one. We also had some news out of New England, Jay, that the Patriots are still looking for an elite wide receiver. And there are reports that they have their eyes. And it doesn't matter who they have their eyes on. The other team's got to be looking at them as well on T. Higgins and Justin Jefferson, who seems to be oh, involved yeah. in a trade rumor every other day. He's going to get traded for Justin Herbert. He's going to the to the New England Patriots. I, I'll just say this. They also are open to trading the number three overall pick. I have yep. been on this train from day one, Jay, that I don't know if a quarterback is locked and loaded going to be the play at number three. It just seems like everything that New England's been telling us throughout the, the free agency process, the moves leading up to the draft, is they want a receiver. They, they want yeah. an elite receiver. And I understand that drafting Marv at three you still got to find the guy that can throw him the ball. But I, I don't know, Jay. What, what are your thoughts with – these are your Patriots. So what are your thoughts yeah. with New England, this whole Marvin Harrison versus quarterback versus they're trying to trade, Gerard Mayo? Where are you at with the whole situation? Yeah, I mean, we're going to find out a lot this week, potentially, on depending on what comes out. We have the AFC coaches meeting today with the media, and I believe the NFC is tomorrow. So it's winter meetings right now with some rule changes, things like that. You guys will hear about that. But in terms of personnel, Washington open to trade. Arizona open to trade. New England open to trade. Chicago doesn't seem like they're so open to trade, and they're locked in for Caleb Williams. So I think it's going to depend on what the other teams do, right? What is the demand? Is Washington really in the trade market if they can't get Caleb Williams? At which point, how does that leave the Patriots? Because if the Patriots are kind of that QB3 spot, right? Drake May is gone or Jane Daniels is gone and Caleb Williams is gone. Whoever the top two are gone, the next team, whether it's the Vikings or otherwise, will be looking to New England. And if they get that, you know, that big offer, I definitely think they should entertain it. I don't know if they need Marv. I don't think taking Marv at three is okay. the right move, potentially. You don't think so? When you, can, you don't think so? I'd rather almost take two receivers that are lower down the board, maybe a mid first, early second, two in the late first, whatever the case may be. Like, if they got the two Vikings picks and they decided to go receiver, receiver with those two picks, I wouldn't actually hate that. That could be better than just drafting Marv potentially for the long-term prognosis of the Patriots. But at the end of the day, Ray, I have to look at the 25 class and say, okay, who are you drafting a quarterback, though? It doesn't matter if you get all these receivers. If you don't have a quarterback, which it seems like next year is going to be slim pickings as far as quarterbacks go, how do you make that happen? So I almost think they have to take Jaden or May or JJ, if that's your guy. I mean, go ahead, take your guy. But I think they almost have to take a quarterback just because of what is coming down the line. And that's the biggest problem for me is if they do trade down or any of these teams trade down, I think two to three years down the line, you're going to wish you took that quarterback potentially. Here's my thing with that, Jay. We, we Going into this season, and if anybody ever, anybody listening to the show, if you want some fun exercise to do on some downtime, go just look up early 2023 mocks from the beginning of the football season and just look at where – the PFFs, the Destination Devies, the Draft Networks had players rated going into the season. And you're, I know it's it's easy to say today, ah, there's no quarterbacks in 2025 until we get to 2025. And you've got multiple options. You've got Riley Leonard from Notre Dame, Shador <laughs> Sanders out of Colorado, Quinn Ewers in Texans, Carson, Carson Beck out of Georgia. We don't think there are guys today. But by this time next year, there'll be three, four, five quarterbacks that people are gushing over. People weren't head over heels. <sighs> Going into this year, people were not all over J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix. You had some well, Michael Penix We had the seniors, shooters. though, to kind of bolster the class. We don't really have that next there, year. There were, the like there were like two guys. There were like two guys coming into this Nixon year. No, Penix, yeah. Not a soul was talking about damn 
Jaden Daniels is a high level no, NFL sure. quarterback. It was Caleb Williams, Drake May. Those were the two guys. So, I mean, I, I'm I'm with you. Whether they trade back, take Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm just not sold, and I, I wouldn't be putting my money on a quarterback at number three yeah. right now. One Another player isn't fixing the roster, right? Uh, right. It's right, just not right. Right. Microtransaction, but bigger overall thought process here, Jay. Deonta Foreman signs a one-year deal with the Browns. They've got Deonta Foreman in the building. They've got Jerome Ford in the building. There are rumors that Nick Chubb's knee is not good. So just questions to you and to the people. What are you doing with Nick Chubb? Is there any long-term hope for Nick Chubb to return to what he was prior to the knee injury and everything that I've heard? It's a pretty bad knee injury. Yeah. Where are you at? Does this signal anything for you or is this just insurance for Chubb and Jerome Ford? I mean, it's definitely a lot of insurance, right? So I was quickly looking up, as you said that, because I was pretty sure they signed Neem Hines, right? Which they did. They did sign Neem yes. Hines as well. Again, another more of a returner at this point, but a returner in Buffalo. We know that he does have some ability as a pass catcher. You have Jerome Ford, obviously. Now you have Foreman. You have Chubb. Maybe it's early insurance for them, right? They don't know what's going to happen with Chubb. They don't know if he's going to be fully ready. Do they need another body? Because Hines isn't going to be a primary rusher or in a committee as a rusher, more likely than not, just a pass catcher returner at this point in his career. We know that Ford, we know that Ford can carry that load pretty well and do a good job with it. But I think bringing in Foreman is good just to have another body for camp. I think it probably just signals that Chubb's not going to be ready as early as they hoped. So they need another back to kind of fill in that role to be that Nick Chubb in practice to help the quarterbacks and, and the wide receivers just kind of get through the motions because Hines isn't really going to be that guy. And Foreman can obviously do that. They have Ford knows the offense. But it is interesting to bring have all these backs and we're saying like, all these guys could have roles in an offense, but in one offense, it's not really going to work. So hopefully it just means that it's an extra body. But Foreman is definitely a guy that we know can do it in the NFL. So it's intriguing to say maybe Chubb isn't going to be ready and we should be concerned. It's tough, man. Running backs to suffer that type of injury. It's um, very difficult to come back from. And it seems like the Browns are just making moves just in case he's not all the way there. But Don Atwood had a question, Jay. want to kick this to you. If you go Marv at three, a.k.a. New England Patriots, and Penix later in the second round, what do you think about that? Marv at three, Penix I in the second round. I don't think that taking Penix is going to save this franchise. So I would honestly rather well, take it's Marv, Marv and Penix. And it's Mar you, you, you don't matter. like whether it's Penix, Zappy. Um, so you don't you don't like the Jacoby prospect Brissett, profile like, of Michael Penix. You're not a you're not a Penix fan, is what you're saying. I don't think he's going to succeed in New England, right? You put him in a slightly better situation with a better offensive line, okay. But if you throw him behind that offensive line, I have a lot of concerns. Not because I don't think he can't do it, but I just don't think it's going to work out. Right, so if you if you have another situation where you have a bad offensive line, Mac Jones is standing back there getting hit all the time, no confidence, fan base hates him, he's out in two years, right, or three years. So it's not so much that I dislike Penix, I just think for that situation, it's not going to help him. They might as well go another direction, start Brissett for the whole year, you're not going to do probably any better or worse, maybe slightly better with Penix, but I don't think it changes much. I'd rather them just go another direction, fill another hole. We know they need quarterback, but it's not going to like make them substantially better or worse to have Penix in the second round. So, again, I think that Daniels is the only one that can really survive behind that offensive line. But if you take Penix in the second round, I think he's just going to end up the same fate as Mac Jones, getting sacked like crazy, make a couple plays, but ultimately they're going to win, what, five, six games, and they're going to be back in the same situation next year. Jay, I cannot believe we went through the show last week with all the arguing we did, and we did not touch on probably the biggest news with one of the best players that the NFL has ever seen, Jay. So I'd be remiss to not bring this up and just talk about it really quickly, but Aaron Donald did announce his retirement from the NFL. Eight, eight time Pro Bowlers, seven time first team All Pro, three time Defensive Player of the Year, Super Bowl champ. I they believe he's got three NFC West titles as well. Aaron Donald, I, I mean, I'll just say this, Jay. Uh, I've been watching football for as long as I can remember, dude. And I, he is by far one of, if not the most disruptive player I've ever seen play. He will go down as one of the best players to ever play, not just defensive foot, defensive side of the ball, but to play NFL football, period. To be an undersized interior defensive tackle, sub-300 pounder. And if you guys don't 
remember the body transformation that he sort of went through. When he came in, he was a little more fluffy and puffy when he was in St. Louis. But man, I, I mean, the workout regimen is legendary. Aaron Donald, I, I, I think he will go down as one of the best players to ever play football. And when we're old and gray and we're talking to our grandkids about the old timers, we'll be talking about Aaron Donald. So congrats to Aaron Donald, Hall of Fame career hell of a player, and I'm pretty sure everybody that participates and plays or fans of teams in the NFC West, they respect the hell out of him, but they won't miss him one bit because he was an absolute yep. game record. Aaron Donald calling it quits after, I believe, 10 years in the NFL, and it still seems like he yep. can play another five years if he wanted to, Jay. But let's get into some 2024 talk, Jay. We had a couple of pro days pop off this past week. Woo! We had J.J. McCarthy. We had some Audric Estime and all this other stuff. Pro yes. day season underway, Jay. And here it is. Jay Rich, McCarthy out here throwing the ball. People going crazy watching J.J. What do you think about these McCarthy throws? He's got the all-white, all-white unit on, Jay. I like this all-white unit rolling out, putting his body into it. Look at Blake Cor Blake Corm. Catching that pass, Jay, real real quick. I want to run that one back. That's Blake. That's a running back downfield over the shoulder catch. What do you think about old J.J. McCarthy, Jay Rich? What do you think about old McCarthy here and uh, this pro day performance from J.J.? Man, this is uh, – I've never seen a player look more like Zach Wilson probably in my entire life oh, than I do stop. right now. Stop than I do right it. now. Stop. I've never seen a guy look more like Zach Wilson than he does right now. Stop. No, I, Honestly, though, um, JJ did look very good, and it, it was indoors, to be fair to him, because it was cold as hell, like I mentioned, in the Northeast, so it was probably snowing outside. But yeah, like everyone was in attendance for this pro day. There was pretty much every team, Ray, except for one very interesting one, the Minnesota Vikings, Ray. No Kevin O'Connell, no Questy at the JJ McCarthy Pro Day, Ray. Get, put on your tinfoil hat. What does it mean, Ray? What does it mean? But JJ did look great. He looked great uh, pretty much all the throws. Like you mentioned, Corm going deep. That was cool to see. He's never going to do that in the NFL, but good to see it in the pro day. But how did you feel about JJ? And how do you feel about the Minnesota Vikings not attending JJ McCarthy's pro Come day? Come on, man. Sm they just they don't want to tip their hand too much. They don't want to tip their hand too much. I, I don't I don't make much of it uh, uh, about it. I believe he's got a private workout scheduled with Minnesota. I don't know if probably. it's this week, next week. He's got a, yeah, he's got a private workout scheduled. I don't think it means anything. I'm not going to read into Minnesota not being there. It seems like all the tea leaves are, they. that's the guy that they're targeting. That's the player that they want. And then we so also say... heard that last year they were, they wanted Anthony Richardson. They wanted, to, they wanted to move their way up to get Anthony Richardson and weren't mm -hmm. able to do that. I'm not reading anything into it. I, I don't want to go too far into it. Listen, the Andy had dinner with the Giants too the day before. Well, they took him out. Well, that's interesting. They're at six. There were some rumors that the Giants are a little concerned about Daniel Jones. ACL, mm -hmm. two neck injuries. They mm -hmm. were in. There were reports that they were in on Jaden Daniels, and that got mm -hmm. out. Seems like the Giants want to go in a different direction. I mean, you pumped us up for for Daniel Jones last year in the offseason going into the season. <laughs> Looks like he may I'm, not have me he more may than not, you. I don't know about that not, one, but he may okay. not have a, a a job very long in the 24 season if they draft Jaden Daniels or JJ McCarthy. But I, I like JJ. I mean, JJ's been somebody that we have liked on this channel for quite some time. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not there with him being my QB one or QB two, but I think he's a rock solid. First round pick. I believe there's a lot Does of he untapped deserve potential. to be in the tier one of quarterbacks. Do you think in terms no, of the draft? No, Cause, no, no, because okay. there's only one tier one quarterback for me. It's well, Caleb Williams is in a tier okay. by himself. Then in my in tier opinion, two, my... then tier two. Sure, you can put him in tier two. You're talking about with Jaden and Drake May. Yeah, yeah I think that's. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's fine. I think it for, again, closer for to me, that than like the next tier. Yes, or a he's tier closer. By himself, he's closer right? to those. Absolutely, he is closer to that cluster than he is the Bo Nix, Michael Penix, in my opinion. But very polarizing player. You got people on both sides of the coin that either love him or they hate him. There's very few. Yeah. I'm indifferent. It's either I love him or the guy's a bum. I, I, I don't take anything from the pro day, honestly, Jay. Uh, he looked good through the ball. I like yep. the ball tracking ability by the pass catchers. But other than that, other than that, I take nothing away from it. He's going to be a top five pick, top 10 pick in the NFL draft. And Ooh, we'll five. see we'll see what he ends up becoming, you know, from a fantasy perspective. And I think that's the big thing. He could be a very good NFL quarterback, but hopefully he'll have the volume, the efficiency. Can I ask you give a question us, real quick? 
Absolutely. Where do you want to see JJ McCarthy go? Do you have an ideal landing spot for JJ McCarthy in your head right now? Because I actually would kind of like him, I think a bit more potentially on the Giants than on the Vikings. Like putting him with Dayball instead of KOC, that's, that's a tough one for me. But I think potentially it could work out. I think potentially it could work out. I mean, he's got the weapons now, but if they don't keep JJ, then what? I don't know. I, I guess Minnesota. Minnesota's fine. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious the as to why. Now. I'm curious as to why you would say the Giants over the Vikings. That I kind of want to see him in a Dable Pro style offense where he could where he could operate in a Josh Allen type of role instead of a Kirk Cousins type of role. I think the offense and the way he would scheme him up and run okay. plays with him, right, right, having right, some stuff right, on I the just, run, okay. that that kind of style. Okay, yeah. I, I can see that. But the, but the ceiling, but. What, what you does. would hope for is Minnesota and Kevin O'Connell would cater around his skill set, right? I, I I think a Kevin O'Connell offense is very good as well. And don't yeah. I, I'm not going to project him to walk into Kirk Cousins' level of volume in year one. I mean, this is one of the better quarterbacks the league has seen over the last 10 years. So I don't I'm not anticipating JJ to come in and get the same type of work. Let's be let's be real here. He's he can a run a pro style offense though, right? He can go he under can center. Run a pro, like, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's absolutely. where that's where he has an edge over a lot of the quarterbacks. A lot of them. And he's and he's comes from that pro style system with with Jim Harbaugh. But let's talk about another player, Jay, because we had another pro day. It is my boy. It's our Caleb Williams had his pro day, Jay. There he is, Caleb. And the, the thing that I noticed about Caleb immediately, even though he checked in a little shorter than six one, he's right at six foot, I believe two hundred and seventeen. Okay. He's put together, Jay. You can see he is put together he's built well muscular build Quincy Avery talked about his throwing mechanics and his throwing motion everything looks in line and sync you see big Brendan Rice out there this is mm -hmm. this is the QB one he's in the tier by himself it's Caleb F and Williams Jay there's nobody else in the tier he's a tier one quarterback the only one that I truly feel rock solid about from a fantasy perspective Caleb Williams had his pro day at USC Keenan Allen was there. They're dapping yeah, each other Keenan up. He's in, he's in Chicago Bears uh, un, uh, paraphernalia. How you feeling about yep. old Caleb? Does this, does, did this pro day do anything? Did it move you in any way, shape, <laughs> form, or fashion? Uh, I didn't, didn't move me, but it was definitely nice to see. You know, Caleb just throwing a little bit. We didn't see it at the combine, obviously. So good to just see him operate in that offense. A little bit of under center stuff, some play action. He was, you know, primarily shotgun in college so it was good to see a little bit of that you know scouts don't really need to see it i think we know that he's going to the bears it's just kind of waiting for that to happen but it was good to see him throw a little bit get people excited for caleb in chicago and good to see him meet keenan allen right who's obviously going to be his wide receiver one next season we'll see what happens with dj Moore. but whoa, keenan allen whoa, showing whoa, his respect whoa, to caleb whoa, williams whoa 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 what? whoa what is up with you and D? what do you have against dj Moore? you have had something i against didn't DJ. say i didn't say you said keenan allen Keenan Allen, wide receiver one for Chicago. Okay, right. Who showed up to the pro day? Was it DJ Moore or was it Keenan Allen? Keenan Allen does live in California, though. He's lived in California for years. So makes sense why he showed up. But I think it is definitely interesting to see Keenan Stop. Allen show up. You don't see, right? When, you, when have you ever seen a receiver show up to a college player's pro day, especially when they have the number one overall? Like, Keenan was doing his own scouting. He was meeting the kid. If he hasn't met him yet, like that was definitely a little bit intriguing. Definitely a little bit intriguing to see I'll that just say showing up for the pro day. It was fun. Have you ever, LA is a different beast, man. There were, they said every NFL team was, was there in to represent their, their franchises at that pro day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, the byline was like, as well as other stars. So, I mean, pe yeah. it's LA It's 75 degrees. It's Los Angeles. I mean, Dude, USC is popping. I, I don't know if you know, but everyone talks about Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, but Juju Watkins out of USC, she's up next. You got Bronny James. You've got Caleb. It's it's LA, dude. Everybody's going to be there. And yes, Keenan Allen is from the California area, so I'm not shocked. But as I thought through it, I don't know how many wide receiver ones from teams show up to collegiate pro days. I haven't seen that, or at least I can't. Yeah, I don't recall that happening. Often, and remember, he's so. he's a cow. He's a cow bear too. So in enemy he territory, is Keenan Allen. He is. He is. Yeah. In, he is. Uh, he is from Berkeley. You know he is in enemy territory. All right, Jay. It's an annual tradition that we look at a mock draft by somebody we don't even know 
But every year he puts out some of the best mocks from a fantasy perspective. Our boy Chad yeah, Ruder right over at NFL.com. Chad Ruder dropped a what three, four round? Four round mock draft. Is it is it four round? I highly doubt we will get through all four rounds. But let's take a look at some of these landing spots and talk through some of the players, some of the landing spots, and some of them are pretty, pretty chalk. We already know what they are, chalk, so we yeah. won't spend a ton of time on it. But let's pull up Ruder's mock and see where he's got some of these rookies going, Jay, and talk through some um some landing spots. So here we go. Chad Reuter, link to this mock will be in the description of this video. Four round 2024 NFL mock draft. Nothing crazy right here, right? We got Caleb at one, Jay. Who's at two? Jaden Daniels at two. Yep. And then Drake May going three. JJ <clears throat> McCarthy going fourth overall. Anything right here that, that you want to say? And in this scenario, the Vikings send two first round picks and a fourth rounder to Arizona for the fourth overall pick. If you're Arizona, okay. you taking those two first and a fourth to move off of the fourth overall pick? 100%. 100%. Okay. All right. Yeah. All I right. I, I'm a little concerned about who they get at 11, but... I'm a little concerned, know. too. I honestly don't yeah. know. I, I, I don't think it's a surefire down this, thing. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're rolling down this together, Jay. Here we go. Marvin Harrison at pick five to the Los Angeles Chargers. Does this make you feel better? About does it make you feel better about Justin Herbert if Marv is going to the Chargers at five? Does it make you feel better about Herbert? I guess a little bit because there is always the nightmare scenario where they don't draft a wide receiver this high, right? That that is a possibility. Absolutely. But yeah, Marv would Absolutely. be locked in wide receiver one for the Chargers. He'd be great. Herbert would have a weapon that he desperately needs. So it's a great fit for both parties. How, I don't how know much would Harbaugh bolts. throw to him? How how much how I think so I'm fine with one, but when you get up more than one, like that's when if you're depending on more than one guy, I think you're looking at probably 130 to 140 or so for Marv. I think is fair. Maybe you go conservative and go 120, but he's gonna be the the one if he's Correct. drafted fifth I overall. Agree. So I agree. yeah, I think it's one guy you can count on when you're counting on more than one in the Chargers offense. That's when you worry me a little bit. Unless it's a tight end, then maybe you could have some relevancy there. I still think the Chargers move back, but with Marv staring them down the face, it's it's hard to pass That's up that talent. To pass up. That's tough yeah. to pass up. All right, we got Malik Neighbors coming off the board, number six overall to the New York Giants, followed by Joe Alt, big tackle out of Notre Dame to Tennessee. The Cardinals traded, so they moved down, but then they moved back they up. Moved back so up. they ended up trading. What did they do? They took Romo Dunze at eight. I love this. They traded up one, a couple of spots with the Atlanta Falcons, and they gave up a third-round pick in order to do that. So they only had to give up a third to move up a few spots. They select Roma Dunze out of Washington. So how would you feel just knowing that they passed on Marvin Harrison, but they still end up with Roma Dunze, and they've got another two picks in the first yeah. round, Jay? Two more first-round picks for the Arizona Cardinals. Wow. Incredible. Yeah, um, it's it's definitely a, it's a good fit, right? Uh, Dunze in Arizona, it's, it's literally just the fear of – can they get the receiver or like Chad had to do trade back up to eight to get that wide receiver one to get one of the big three um, passing on Marv to get Odunze definitely worth it um, with the trade down. So I think it's a good pick because I still have 23 to go and make another selection that they can that they desperately, desperately need. What do you think about Malik to the Giants? I love it. I, 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 I mean, love it. I think I it's, love it. I still don't know whether it's Malik or Odunze, though, because oh, I don't know either. The I'm with you. I'm seems with you. split. It, I'm it with seems you. so that's what I wanted to ask you about is do right now do you think it's I'm still thinking it's more Odunze if it's receiver I because don't we're know. seeing a lot of Odunze smoke to the Giants right now I don't know why I'm still very much team neighbors so I'm with the Giants here in this mock I would take neighbors as wide receiver too but there is a lot of smoke with Odunze being the wide receiver too right who do you think is going to be the wide receiver too I don't know I don't know. I'm seeing I'm seeing both I, neighbors is for me. Neighbors would be my pick, but I'm not I'm not in the damn war room. I'm not on the Giants. I'm not on that team. I'm not it. I, I, I have no influence and, and it's impact really over just that. the John. They're the only the, team that I seems know. to be that in on on Odunze right there. So I think it could be point. I think it could be either of the guys. But you tell if that if that were to play out where Odunze goes to the Giants and you're telling me neighbors is paired with Kyler. Dude. Jay. This is tough. So, but this, but this one, Jay. Ray, would it sway you at all? Would it sway drafts? you? Would it sway you? Would it sway? So, ne who? Oh, let, let me just ask you quickly. Do you like Neighbors or Odunze more? Which one? 
I am team neighbors, pretty firm. Okay, so pretty, neighbors I don't, in Arizona. I don't Arizona, think Capital would change it much. Neighbors in Arizona are Marv in Los Angeles, who you taking as rookie wide receiver one. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Oh, you said neighbors or Marv? I would take Marv. I would take Marv. You would take Marv in LA over yes. neighbors in Arizona? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. But I would probably also take neighbors in New York over Odunze. I think that's the closer one for me. Is do you want Odunze with Kyler or do you want neighbors in New York with who we don't necessarily know who the QB is? Mm. You may you may consider like you may go 50 50 if you have yeah. some some uh, some picks I, there. You may I choose 10, to go Odunze. If I had yeah. 10, I might split it up 50 50. I might go five, six six neighbors. Six, and four six neighbors for for Odunze. You gotta have a piece. Lean my bias point. a bit, yeah. That's the point. The Bears, they go defense. We know that they wanted another edge rusher opposite Montez Sweat, Such so they get Dallas pick, Turner. Man. Love this pick. The Jets, Brock Bowers. They get Aaron Rodgers, I another still weapon. I don't like it. I still you don't like it? I do like it. I, I like Brock in New York, especially with them landing Mike Williams opposite Garrett Wilson. You've got two good but receivers. How can, they, do you think three can coexist, though? Yeah, it's Aaron Rodgers. He should be able to. Anything is better but than he's Zach on a volume. He's not a high-volume passer. He's I think like the Jets. I think the Jets are in. I think the Jets are in last life mode. Like this is it. They got 100%, one life left. Hundred percent. So they are about to just go. You. They got to go all out. They've got to go all out. You've got to deal with Miami. You've got to still deal with the Buffalo Bills. Regardless of what we think, I think this is. They know they've got a year or two, and it's a wrap. So throw the shit out of the ball, the Jets. Throw yeah. throw the ball. Merz is saying Jets need O line. They did sign some players to where it's. Four to five yeah, they got, for now, yeah, they but they Tyra, definitely could use some depth. They could use some more depth. They could use some more yeah. more depth, but they did bring in Tyron Smith on that one-year deal. The yeah. Atlanta Falcons, with their trade back from eight, they pick up Jared Verse, and again, the, the Falcons have been one of the worst teams at generating pressure over the last three years, so they go yep. with the edge rusher, Jared Verse. The Denver Not Broncos, Jay, I mean, we keep seeing it. Ray, Bo this, Nicks. this can't happen. Like, if this happens... I, I will. I said it on the on the mock draft I did last week. I would not take him in the first round. Like I would. There's. I don't care if he goes at twelve. I am not taking him in the first round of a rookie draft. There's no way. There's no. And people would a hundred percent. Twelfth overall, first round quarterback, guaranteed starting spot. Well, with Sean Payton, you never know. You wouldn't do but it. But Bo next to I'm Denver, man, you. at twelve. I don't know. That is. That is a dicey situation. And I don't even hate the team. I don't. I think the team is actually set up pretty well. But Knicks to Denver. Ugh. All right. Ah. Let's keep going. Ah. Got Talisi Fuaga to the Raiders. I absolutely love that pick. Olu Fushana to the Saints. That is fantastic for them. You got Terry on Arnold to the Colts. Quinn Yon Mitchell to the Eagles. Man, what a freaking pick by they Philadelphia. Did. They moved up with Seattle in order to snag Quinn Yon. You got Chop Robinson, the edge out of Notre Dame, uh, not out of Notre Dame, excuse me, out of Penn State to Jacksonville. You got J.C. Latham, the big tackle out of Alabama, going to help protect Joe Burrow. And the Kansas City Chiefs in Reuters mock moves up with the Los Angeles Rams to select Xavier Worthy, the speedster out of Texas, going to Kansas City. You got Graham Barton, Tyler Guyton. You got two big tackles coming off of the board. Steelers just loading up on that offense because they are going to run the shit yep. out of the ball in 2024. Make sure you have Najee Harris and Jalen Warren and probably some Justin Fields because he will play at some point. He will get in. I think even when if Russ starts, Jay, off the rip, which he should, I think there may be some packages where some Fields packages, comes in yeah. to run the, the I Trey think Lance so. scenario. I think they'll well, I think there'll be packages to keep him involved. Keep him in the game because there's probably a chance where he's got to play, whether it's a start for an injured Russ or they get out of it. But I do think that Pittsburgh is going to load up and, and rush the hell out of the ball. Tyler Guyton to Miami. Peyton Wilson to Seattle. I like it. You got the Arizona Cardinals going lot two, lot two. And then you've got Brian Thomas Jr. to the Dallas Cowboys. Jay, to my Dallas Cowboys, Brian Thomas Jr. We've got a lot of other needs. There are a lot of positions <laughs> of need do, yeah. for the Dallas Cowboys. And as I look down this mock and I see Byron Murphy and Jackson Powers Johnson drafted right after, the fantasy Damn. fan in me is like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. Give us a Brian Thomas. But the NFL side is I would much rather Byron Murphy or Jackson's power, Jackson, Pow Jackson Powers Johnson, the center out of Oregon. I, I'd much rather 
any of those two guys ahead of Brian Thomas. But from a fantasy perspective, this is, is a damn good spot for BTJ to land in, Jay. Yeah, he'd replace Michael Gallup pretty much right away. You know, Chad's talking about him starting and uh, competing yes. with Tolbert. I think he beats out Tolbert pretty easily. Yes. Um, probably looking at 100 targets year one. They yes. still have Cooks, right? They they were able to no, retain Cooks, Cooks on, I believe. Cooks is so. on a one-year deal. I don't... Uh, uh, yes, I think I think they got yeah. it. I think I think yes. I yeah, think they, they still use him as a compliment to Brandon Cooks. Yes, so he'd be the three, probably. Yeah, like eighty to a hundred. It'd be okay. It, but do you think he'd be overdrafted in fantasy? I think he could be potentially, probably. potentially, probably. potentially. Probably. But, but it's a good I, fit. I would, it's a good fit. And if they retain Dak, then it's like a really, really good long-term spot, consistent probably at wide receiver. I'll tell you right now, this pick by the Buccaneers is great news for Rashad White and Baker Mayfield. JPJ to Tampa Bay where they need a center. Need bad. This is a hell of a freaking pick. The Cardinals load up on Nate Wiggins, the speedster corner out of Clemson. Troy Fatuanu out of Washington. My God, the Packers and Jordan Love get this kid. What a yep. great pick by Green Bay right here. You got Darius Robinson going to help out Aiden, o Aiden Hutchinson in Detroit at 29. Patrick Paul, the big tackle out of Houston, going to Baltimore. Good for Derrick Henry. Good for Lamar Jackson. You got Max Melton going to the San Francisco 49ers. And the Los Angeles Rams with their need at defensive tackle take Johnny Newton out of Illinois to fill up that uh, interior defensive line spot. Let's go to round two, Jay. Round one, any any big shockers, surprises for you in round one? Really just the fact that people continue to put Bo Nix up for Denver. Like, if he doesn't go to Denver, he could easily fall out of the first round. It's just the fact that Denver seems to be in the mix there at 12. is definitely interesting. But we do have a hot pick, Ray. Up at mm. 33. Um, Coming you can scroll hot. down a bit so the people can see it. But Michael yeah, Penix Jr., Ray, sorry. traded, uh, the Raiders traded up 233 with the Carolina Panthers to pick up Michael Penix Jr. We've seen this landing spot a lot. I think it's okay, but without the running game of Jacobs now, I think I feel a little bit worse about it, but the volume could be decent for Penix in year one on the Raiders. How do you feel about Michael Penix Jr. heading over to your Las Vegas Raiders? I mean, this would be, it'd be, between him and Aiden O'Connell in a camp battle, and if Aiden O'Connell won the job coming out of camp, two bad games in a row, he's getting benched. He goes out there and stinks 100%. it up for two weeks. He's getting benched. Penix is in the game. And even if he doesn't stink it up early, they will play Penix at some point this year if, if they trade it up to the top of the second to get him. Just depends on when he would start. So He's in that Levis let, 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 me, let, me, let me ask you this. Bo Nix, 12th overall to the Broncos, or Penix, 33 overall to the Raiders? In terms of what? I would Which prefer Nix just because of draft capital, like solely because of draft. It's You say it all the time, an opportunity to get an opportunity, and that is very firmly in the hands of Bo Nix. Let me just Michael ask Penix. you this. Opportunity to throw the ball to Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Michael Mayer, strong running game, or... Sure. Cortland Sutton, Marvin Mims, Greg Dolchitz with Sean Payton. It's, it, it's fair. I'm not I, I like, like Sean real Payton. talk. It's like, not terrible, I, I, get but yeah. I get the capital, but th if they trade it up to the top of the second for Penix, we're not talking Michael yeah. Pratt. We're not talking Jordan Travis. We're not talking some develop a guy who was looked at and viewed as a top 15 pick just a mere months, a couple of months ago. I would probably it's pass on wherever I would have to p draft Bo Nix, and I would take Michael Penix, honestly, man. I, honestly, okay. honestly. Okay. New England, Marius Mims. I love Ooh. this pick by the New England Patriots. This Need is good badly. for Drake May or their young quarterback. I, Arizona, they've got a shot to just walk away from this draft as freaking winners. They select Cooper Beebe out of Kansas State right here at 35 to, uh, again, upgrade their offensive front with the assets that they got in the first, I mean, this is just, this is outstanding. My Arizona, my God, Monty's working. Like, this is working his ass off. Jordan Morgan tackle going to the commanders. You got Braden Fisk out of Florida state, Cooper DeJean, uh, Cooper DeJean going to Tennessee. So they need more defensive back help. Scroll down the they board, do. the Carolina. Oh. oh, oh, Jay 39th overall. Let's help Bryce Young out with Ben Sanat out of Kansas State, the tight end. We're, we're, no need you know, to take Lad, senior bowl? <laughs> No need to take Adnan Mitchell or Lad McConkey. No need. Get that Ben Sanat. That's that's what you need, Carolina. What an awful pick by Carolina at 39. Hopefully he's good because 
Woof. He's athletic Man. though, right? He's athletic. He had like a Woof. pretty good. Woof. He was like a nine seven three Raz score. Yeah, I don't like it, Jay. That that that, that one is a head scratcher of all head scratchers. Enos Regstraw to the Commanders. Jaden Hicks going to the Packers. Kool Aid McKinstry falling down the board to the Houston Texans and D'Amico Ryan. That was surprising. Cam Hart yeah. to Atlanta and the Panthers are back up. Forty four, maybe just maybe. They'll take Adnan Mitchell or Ladd McConkey. No, we'll take Austin Booker, the edge rusher out of Kansas. And with the with the with the Panthers passing, the Saints said, "Shit, we'll trade up. We'll take Ladd McConkey at forty five. The Colts go Xavier Leggett at forty six. Oh, could you and imagine? And the Giants fans? take Blake Corum at forty seven. My God, Jay, I, I am in love with this section of the draft, though. I, listen, I am in uh, love with this section that makes of the draft. One of us. Well, this is awful. Austin Booker <laughs> over these receivers for Carolina. But the Saints getting Lad McConkey. I'm just talking about where the players fit. I like that. I like Lad McConkey. Where in does he New fit? Orleans, in the slot. Or on the behind center. Chris Olave? Or at flanker, behind Chris Olave. Or, or right? flank. Yeah, or or at the Z. At the Z. Slot and Z. Xavier yeah. Leggett to Indianapolis. The reason why I love this is with A. Rich. There are probably ways to just get Leggett the ball quickly. Let him do some things, operate in that Alec Pierce mold and roll, get him the ball. I really do like this fit of Leggett in Indianapolis, and it would only be a matter of time before Blake Corum is the RB1 in New York. Blake Corum and Malik Neighbors in this offense, I like both of these spots. I like all three of these spots. Do you think he can win the job out of camp? Who, Blake Corum? Corum? Yeah. Absolutely. Over Singletary? Because Singletary does know the system. That's like the only, okay, the okay, okay. only yeah, caveat well, okay, is he knows fair, the fair, system. Fair. But other than that, I'm job, with you. Talent. But he's on the field. He's on the field yeah. week one with Singletary. Yeah. There's a, he would there's be a the two goal man back. If you remember, in Buffalo, they kept bringing in backs to work the goal line for Devin Singletary because he could not succeed on the goal line. So from that standpoint, you would see him in those goal line packages and probably even potentially a little bit of a better pass catcher at times in Singletary. It's probably closer than people think. McConkey in New Orleans. I you don't like that it. Shit. It's it's really? I, I don't think he's got Derek really? Carr. That's not good. He's behind Chris Olave. That's not good. They have nobody I think else. He's probably a 70, 80 target guy, which is like nothing for fantasy. Leggett probably has a better shot to catch deep touchdowns in Alec Pierce's role. Because Alec Pierce, people don't realize he played, I believe, 90% of snaps last year. He never got the ball. But he played a lot. So he's running a lot of deep routes, clearing out for receivers. Having a Rachel over Gardner Minshew obviously would be a massive upgrade from a deep ball perspective. Um, but I'd be curious what he would see in terms of targets. But obviously, we love Shane Steichen. I think he'd find ways to get, get involved. But Corman, New York is interesting, right? Do you think he would be RB1 if he was drafted to New York as the RB1 in this draft? Let's see where some of the other backs go. And then we'll go back to it. Let's see where some of the other backs go. Jacksonville takes Tavondre Sweat at 48 and then Adnai Mitchell to the Cincinnati Bengals at 49. Jay, top 50 pick, Adnai Mitchell to the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Seattle Bye-bye Seahawks. T. Higgins. Uh, well, uh, that, is, that is one implication. We've got Seattle taking a center. Zeitner out of Michigan. Troy Franklin to Pittsburgh. Ugh. Ugh. Sad. This, like is an, this is an absolute like nightmare selection. I don't nightmare. like it, Jay. I don't Ray, like you it. You have Troy Franklin, who, for better or worse, has disappointed throughout the process. But then you have Pittsburgh that continues to crank out wide receiver twos at an extremely high rate. So it's like... <sighs> And you have the Arthur Smith offense, which does not support two wide receivers at all. So the biggest problem for me is, would you Eric, draft we Franklin already talked about. We already talked about Blake second. Corm. Yeah, Eric, said, Corm. Eric, said, Eric said passes right by Corm. We already talked about Corm. Catch up. Go ahead, Jack. Would you draft Franklin mid-second in a rookie draft? You know, super flex, PPR. Sure. For ADV, because people would? love him. Yeah, I mean, but I, I don't like this spot at all. I, I don't like this spot at all from a fantasy perspective. It's tough. Like it's tough. He's probably going to be in a higher draft slot than I want to take him realistically, but there is still a, a hot one coming in. I would take AD Mitchell over him and I would take the guy who's next over him as well. But right, it's, let's keep he would definitely get some inflated value. We got Bullard, the safety out of Georgia going to the Rams, loading up on defense. Jatavian Sanders going to Philadelphia. I like the spot for JT Sanders, Edrin Cooper, He's linebacker dead in Philly. <laughs> He's dead I like in the, I like, the, no I like the football. 
there's no there might not be year one opportunity, but uh, have you watched Catch and Fall Goddard lately? Have you watched him? Uh, catch yeah, and he Fall. He gets hurt sometimes. Catch, catch and, and Fall. fall baby. Edgerin Cooper, GMGP, what's up, D, bro? Edgerin Cooper, I love the linebacker out of Texas A&M going to Cleveland, just Woo. continuing to load up the defense. You've got Mason Smith, defensive tackle, going to the Miami Dolphins from LSU. And then you got Jonathan Brooks to the Dallas Cowboys. There it is. Jonathan Brooks, Dallas Chad Cowboys. Chad loves your Cowboys, man. You already got love, BTJ. You got BTJ. Now you get Jonathan Brooks. We're just they ignoring. Don't even care about the defense. We're <laughs> ignoring the fact that we have no center, no left tackle, no right tackle, no defensive tackle, no linebackers. We're just going to ignore all those five positions in need for the Dallas Cowboys and load this shit up from a fantasy Take an perspective. RB who isn't playing this season. Uh, D-Bro, D-Bro coming in hot. Never AD Mitchell. Always. A.D. Mitchell, D-Bro, all day Mitchell, always D-Bro. We keep going down the board. You've got Penn State with another athletic edge rusher going to Tampa Bay. Michael Hall, the athletic defensive tackle out of Ohio State, going to Green Bay. Then Houston just gets another one, Jay. I mean, golly, Kool-Aid McKinstry in the second. Now they get Keon Coleman here at 59. I love it. With CJ Stroud. No, you don't. I you don't love, love it, Ray. You don't I... love it. You don't love it. You know why? Because you are getting absolutely zero shares of Keon Coleman. Welcome to the 108 slot, Keon Coleman, at that draft slot to Houston. Even at 59, <sighs> it doesn't matter. Like, he would go right to the 108 spot, right where that tier rate is behind so? Brock Bowers. That okay. is where Keon Coleman will okay. go. Okay. We've got some, we've we didn't even talk about Xavier Worthy we... going to Kansas City at 19. Didn't well, even talk I mean, about we, it. We skipped right we, over we, it. Because, because we don't care. I, it's ex guardy <laughs> to Kansas City. He'll get from all the landing spots that we've seen this one. Do you think Keon Coleman's spot was better than Leggett in Indy, McConkey yes. in New Orleans, Brian yes. Thomas in Dallas? Yes. Worthy I think he could in, easily replace Collins. If they want to get rid of Nico Collins, Coleman could potentially replace him. And at that well, point, well, you're telling me I don't great. love it. I love the spot in Houston, but yes, he probably goes to a, goes up to a point where I, I'm uncomfortable paying for him in rookie zero drafts. Shares, but yeah. I mean, Houston, if they walk away from this thing with Kool Aid McKinstry and Keon Coleman in the second, my God, great for them. But I definitely, I think, I think of all the landing spots in in for fantasy football purposes, at least. Houston's probably the one where people will overreact the most outside of Kansas City because Kansas City is always number one on that list. But if if Houston drafts a receiver like Keon Coleman, people will lose their pants for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, we got Cam Kitchens going to Detroit, Marshawn Nealon going to Buffalo, TJ Tampa, the fast speedster out of Iowa State, going to Baltimore. Man, this this offensive tackle right here from Washington, Rosengarten. I saw a lot of people DP talking about him early. Him. DP was something. Well, DP was something about him a yeah. while ago. And then you got yeah. Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky going to the Rams. So the Rams are still like, Aaron Donald's gone. We got him. We got to yeah. load up on defense. We have got to load up on defense. Jay, let's go round three. Let's go round three. All let's right. go round three. See, we got, I'm just so disappointed. Carolina has yet to take a receiver. Bryce, Bryce Young ain't got nobody, Jay. Nobody <laughs> besides Deontay Johnson. So here we go. We've got Lasseter, the corner out of Georgia, going to Carolina at 65. Jalen Wright. Okay. To Arizona. I like the pairing okay. with with uh with James Conner. Tess yeah. Walker to the Commanders. This just That feels high, doesn't it? I'm surprised. This to feels see him like Deami Brown think he all was... over again. It feels like Deami that... well, Brown. Wait, all you don't got a hel again. you don't got a helmet scout it, baby. You know it. I, it's hundred percent Deami Brown. It feels <laughs> like Deami Brown. Brown all over again. Trey yeah. Benson to New England. That's fine. I mean, they got to replace I, Ramondre after this season, so let's see okay. how it goes. Oh, man. Just right? Ramondre's got one more year. That, that, They're not going to re-sign him because they I, never I'll do. I'll tell you what. So. That Jalen Wright to Arizona spot is a sneaky-ass good one, man, because offensive line getting better. Look at what they did offensively from their skill position players. You've got the yep. hammer James Conner in front of them, so don't even get it twisted. He's not coming in to take James Conner's job. But in a complimentary role to James Conner's hammer – you got thunder and lightning here with Jalen Wright. Yeah. That good offense. Arizona, Arizona's trying to build a little something, something, man. They're trying to build a little something, something in Arizona. DJ James, the cornerback out of Auburn, going to the Chargers. We know they need defensive help. Tyler Newbin, the explosive safety out of Minnesota, the Giants. We've got uh, Dorless out of Oregon, defensive lineman Brandon Dorless. I, I, I didn't know who that was. 
Jeremiah Trotter Jr. going to the Jets, linebacker out of Clemson. You also have Jerrion Jones. I really like that player. It's a good, good, good cornerback right there out of Florida okay. State. Kingsley out of BYU, mm. the big offensive tackle, going to protect uh, going to protect Kirk Cousins. And now the Bears go back to the offensive side of the ball. And in the third round, they select Roman Wilson out of Michigan to pair with Caleb Williams, Keenan Allen, and DJ Moore. I think from a fantasy perspective, this would really, really hurt Roman Wilson from an NFL yeah. fit. Really good to have him in there mm-hmm. learning behind Keenan Allen and company. Maybe he's a guy that he does a little something in year one that shows some promise, and maybe there's some opportunity in year two. I think it's a great fit for Caleb. This is better, for, in my opinion, better for Caleb Williams than Roman Wilson, but a lot of potential there for Wilson to learn behind DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. I think this is a hell yeah. of a spot for him to go. Braylon Trice, the edge out of Washington, going to Denver. And then big Johnny Wilson, man. Big Johnny Wilson. What's up? Keith Sanchez in the building, man. I see Draft Network in the damn building. Keith and DP in the building. Shout out to my dog from TDN, the Draft Network. Keith and DP do incredible work over there. Johnny Wilson of the Raiders. I feel like this is just a, it's just a fun freaking pick, Jay. Just like, let's just F it. Like, let's, let's get Johnny happens, Wilson yeah. out here and see what happens. Put him in as a power slot. Maybe if panics a big target. Maybe they trick him into thinking he's still a receiver, but they use him like Darren Waller in the past. I don't know, they but I'm intrigued. Too, I'm intrigued by the spot of Johnny Wilson to the Raiders. If you get drafted that high, you got to pay attention. You, well, you've got dra- to pay attention. Agreed. Yeah. Cade Stover, the tight end out of Ohio State to the Commanders. You've got Junior Colson, the linebacker from Michigan, going to Atlanta. Bengals going offensive line, Seattle going safety, and then the Indianapolis Colts, Jay. Oh, Marshawn Lloyd out of Talk USC. Me, how, how, how should I feel about this? We got Jonathan Taylor. He got his extension. Yeah. So now what with Marshawn Lloyd? Is he relevant? Do you draft God, him? Man. Is he higher I, than a mid third? I love, I, you know how I feel about Marshawn Lloyd and my USC you trophies. You do love Marshawn Lloyd. This would be a spot that I'd be like, why the hell would you do? Why would you pay me, <laughs> Indianapolis? What me? are you doing? Why would you do this? Like, for what? You got to replace Zach Moss. Cool. Go do that in round six. Don't steal us from Marshawn Lloyd to the Rams or Lloyd to the Bengals. Or, don't, don't steal the joy. Like, why would they do this? Uh, this makes no sense, Jay. If this were to happen, this would not be good. I, I'm no, not going not to say... Good. I'm not going to say Marshawn Lloyd is dead, but he definitely ain't usable. It, it, there's not an immediate path for opportunity. This would suck. This would suck. Cole World this would saying suck. very Charbonnet-ish. Would feel like that. It, even probably worse. Probably a little bit worse. Even yeah, worse. Probably because worse because it's even less worse. talent this, and this, better running back. I just don't like it, Jay. I, I don't like it. Um, got, uh, uh, we've got Hunt. We've got Edge going to University of Houston, Christian Houston University. Okay, going in the third round. Javon Foster. Nice. Yeah. Pittsburgh going on tackle again. Just tackles, tackles, tackles. We are just going to run the ball. Mm-hmm. We're not even going to try to throw it. Uh, we go down the board a little bit more. Chris Jenkins, defensive t- Oh, sorry. The Browns went offensive tackle. Texans went D-tackle. Cowboys finally upgraded the Woo. offensive line. And I do like Zach Frazier out of West Virginia, so it's a good pick. Seth Gray out of North Carolina, very good linebacker. Theo Johnson, athletic tight end out of Penn State, going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ricky Pearsall to the Atlanta Falcons at 90. I like it. Ooh, that's a good spot. I like the spot. spot. They need a three. They need a three. I like it. I like it, Jay. Tanner Bordellini. Tanner Bordellini from Wisconsin going to the Green Bay Packers. So you're telling me Jordan Love gets Fatuano in the first, and then they get Bordellini in the second, in the third? Let's go, Jordan Love. Let's go, Jordan Love. Wheels up. Wheels Let's go Jordan up Love. for Jordan Love. Wheels up, man. He's All right, who else good. we got, Jay? I'm He's... tired of talking. Oh, Ooh. God. I, I see Braylon I see Allen pick. to the I Tampa Bay Buccaneers, too. Buccaneers uh, baby. I, I, I see Let's a pick go. in a couple that is, uh, that yes. Yeah, Braylon Allen to Tampa Bay. Um, what? Come on, yeah. Ray. What, what does this mean for Rashad White? Is he Nothing. dead? Is he Nothing. dead? Nothing. This is what? This is still third round, right? Third round Nothing. comp picks at this no, point at 92? No, he's not dead. Stop. No, no. Yeah, Braylon that, that, Allen is Look interesting. at that. Cold World said my Italian was, was mostly fire. Uh, he said mostly it was my fire. Italian. Yeah, mostly yeah. Uh, Bordellini. Bordellini. 
I do not well, believe I mean, that Braylon Allen threatens Rashad White in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Mason McCormick going to the Baltimore Ravens and then announce this pick, Jay, because people, I kid you not, they'll, they will, this will happen if this happens, Jay. You ready? Lord have mercy, okay. I'm about to bust. Who's the pick? Who's the pick? I, I can't who see have, it. Who do we have at 49? Oh, my God. Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver from Rice, to, bust. to the San Francisco 49ers with Brandon Ayuk potentially on the trade block, Ray. How would you feel about the McCaffrey bros out in San Fran? It ain't about how I would feel. It's how the community would feel. And they would tell themselves. I don't think it'd be that crazy. I, think I don't people think it'd be would, that think, crazy. Dude, let, let me tell you this. He gets drafted by 49ers, right? He gets drafted by yeah. the Niners. And there's not a lot of buzz throughout mining camp, but training camp, you see the first highlight. Brock Purdy goes out there. You know, he waddles out there like Purdy does, that stupid look on his face. He gets under center. You see Christian McCaffrey behind him. You see Brandon Ayuk on the outside. You got Debo over there. You got Kittle lined up offset. And then Luke McCaffrey motioning across the field with Christian. <laughs> Down the timeline. There's Luke McCaffrey mo you see one McCaffrey going to the left and the other white one going to the right. People will be. But you're in. not going to confuse Kyle them. Shan Kyle Shan it doesn't matter. You will confuse. They'll it's McCaffreys are all the same. They're all going to score. I think people would really like this spot, Jay. I, I think this, and I do believe that with this skill set, he he lands in a spot like this, or Brendan Rice lands on the Niners. There will be some built-in ADV for for those players for fantasy. No lie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's probably in that old Kendrick Bourne role, which is fine. It's not. Deep crazy, just said it, but it's he's going to cook. He's going to cook those training camp reps. No doubt, he yeah, is going. Well, that that value he will is, do. Yes, that right, he will Ma do. We got Malachi Corley to the Jaguars. We've got some defensive tackles fit. to Cincinnati. Mo Kamara to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cam Little and Cedric Johnson as a comp selection to the Commanders. Let's quickly go through round four, Jay. Panthers finally did it. They got Bryce Young some help, and they just they, they, they went to they went to Alabama. Jermaine Burton's cool. like screw screw drafting anybody in the second or third round. We just we'll get you some Jermaine Burton for your troubles in Carolina here in the fourth. Uh, I don't know who this center is. We got Leonard Taylor to New England. Makai Wingo D tackle. Will Shipley. Oh, 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 oh man. Jay. Oh boy. That Will is, Shipley comes okay. off the board. Top five pick, day three. You know, you wake up. Day two, you're you're still excited. Day three, fifth pick off the board. You're still trying to wake up. It's day three. And uh, with the 105th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, Jim Harbaugh and the Los Angeles Chargers mm. select Will Shipley out of Clemson. Talk about it. You got to pay attention to that, man. If they take any running back, you'd be like, okay, it's Gus Bus, and then what? Right. And then Will Shipley so, in the Eckler, in the it's Eckler role. And I didn't use a white running back. White receiver. lightning, baby. Well, Let's go. Light lightning. Light lightning. Austin Eckler's light skin. So you now oh, you're saying okay. Will Shipley would be I white said, lightning. Will Shipley's white lightning, yeah. I'm intrigued. I like it. I mean, at that I point, like there's, Bert, there's no... I kind of like Burton of Carolina. I think that's a little... I, we poo-pooed on that a little bit, but they, I just wish they would have addressed it earlier as well, but I like Burton yes, here in the 100%. fourth. 100%. 100%. I think Shipley to L.A. Is he a mid-second, Jay? Rookie drafts, mid-second? I think it is It is in consideration, yes. I think it, yeah. I think at that point he'd be in consideration, 100%. Because he right. could be the RB1 quicker than you, than people may realize. And so if you want to take that shot, I mean, they're, I mean, Ray, you do see a world where he doesn't get 100 you know carries Harbaugh as recruited, the RB2. You know Harbaugh recruited Shipley heavy, oh, too. 100%. 100%. All right, let's keep scrolling down the board. Now we're just looking for fantasy guys. Spencer Rattler to the Falcons in the fourth. All right. Kirk like will be it. there forever. He can get yeah, hurt. Not, I like it. I like it. I like it. All right, let's scroll down the board a little bit more. Jalen Polk, wide receiver out of Washington to the Ravens. Sure. I'd like him in Seattle if he's playing for his old OC. Ooh, here goes one. Malik Washington, wide receiver out of Virginia to the Philadelphia Eagles in the fourth. Would you draft him in a rookie draft? Yeah, somewhere in the third, third or fourth round. He's got no shot to ever score fantasy points. It's slot, man. Slot. Philly don't throw it in those slot. You know that. Okay, all right. We both know I'm that. Just, okay, well, well, I'm just, uh, you said, do I like it? Oh, God. Houston Texans. Look who they get. Who do the Houston <laughs> Texans get, Jay? Jaheim Bell. 
But at that mm. point, like on Houston, what's the the role is is like not this. The role isn't yeah. more so for Bell, but just another weapon for Stroud. More offensive players that defensive coordinators have to defend yeah. in that Bobby Slowick air raid type offense. You just add yeah. another versatile playmaker to the offense. It just makes things makes life a little bit easier for CJ Stroud. Here we mm. go. Arizona goes Brendan Rice here in the fourth round. So now you're pairing Brendan Rice with Romo Dunze with Jalen Wright. So Dunze Kyler they got. Murray. Jaylen yeah, they got Odunze. They got Jalen Wright. They went uh, Cooper BB in the second with the offensive line. Yeah. I like what they're doing. They moved on from Rondell Moore. Do you I like think what they they're can doing. Beat out Michael Wilson? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, yes. I think there's some. But some I like Mike Wilson. There, right? I like both Mike Wilson. Were third though, rounders, I, both kind of win in similar ways. Rice, Rice is a little more physical. What's but interesting that is you get is Kyler Murray. All his pass catching options are 6'3 and taller. McBride, Odunze, big. Rice, yep. Wilson. They're all big, big, big wide receivers. So, biggest wide yep. receiver room in the league. You got Jared Wiley, the tight end out of TCU, going to the San Francisco 49ers. And then yep. the Niners clean up with Audric Estime and his fabricated pro day time of a 4 5 8. Estime to San Francisco does what to you? Absolutely nothing for me. He replaces Gets Jordan him Mason. You Get replaces drafting, Jordan Mason. I, I don't. It. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't feel. Uh, I don't feel any way about Audric Estime and that fabricated pro day Can't time, be the which next I do not. Kyron Williams. No, I don't believe okay. so. I don't believe so. So that's four rounds. Chad Ruder, four rounds. Anything surprising in round four to you? Uh no. It's it's really yeah. just that uh, Chargers Shipley. pick of Shipley, man. That would Shipley. be. That would rattle the rookie boards a little bit like you have to if they didn't take another running back let's say i think they probably would at that point only in the fourth but if they only took shipley and it was shipley and gus bus like those are your running backs and if shipley can be the pass catching slash you know 80 to 100 carry guy that's gonna be a pretty good role of fantasy football so you'd want to be drafting some shipley in rookie drafts D bro said he, he made a pro uh brendan rice comment in the chat you know i, I, got I didn't see it uh, he said he said Brendan Rice is better than Michael Wilson, but me and Debro have been going okay. at it back there and forth go. about Brendan there Rice since the Senior Bowl. I was on his ass last night, but it's all love. So there it is. <laughs> Appreciate it, Ch Chad Reuter, for the uh, for the four round mock, and I do love the Will Shipley of the Chargers pick. Ultimately, Debro, Jay, no, what, but Javon Baker, no Javon. Yeah, Baker. no Baker, man. Uh, yeah. that, no Javon Baker. That I, I think Baker's going to end up being a day three pick, Jay. But I think he's I think he's a very, very good wide receiver. And he's one of those day yeah. three receivers that even with that day three capital, all that's going to do is push him down rookie draft boards further for me to draft him. Because I do think that people we'll like see. him. People uh, do like him though. That's people the, like that's him. The I problem. like him. Yeah, people yeah. People like do him. like people like Javon Baker. So we appreciate everybody tapping into this show today. Thank y'all for tuning in for another episode of Wake Up. We got a lot of good stuff coming this week. Make sure you tap into Destination Dynasty. That dropped today from Scott Connor. We also have the Overreaction Podcast going up tomorrow from Chase and Cody. We've got Off the Line with Gene and Ike. No Destination Chill on Wednesdays. Moving forward, Scott and I will only be doing those Sundays in the offseason. But Jay Rich, with our partnership with Underdog Fantasy, MLB coming back. Pick them show mm -hmm. this week, right? Wednesday and Friday, 8 a.m. Pick them show. Wednesday and Friday. Have some fun. We're just going to have some Nine fun. Eastern. We're going yes. to live stream 9 Eastern, 8 Central time build out a couple of underdog slips, and we will give money away every single stream. If one of, the, if one of the slips hit, I will give the money away. Jay Rich will not, but I will. So make sure you tap in to our underdog stream. Use the promo code DDD to enter the live giveaway for the NFL draft. We're going to do it big. Y'all have a great week. We appreciate the support. Anything you want to say to people before we get out of here, Jay Rich? No, just a big week of content. So definitely tune in, subscribe, like, follow us on X because there is lots of good stuff coming this week and even more on the way. So tap in the DD. We'll have a new Shane Says this week, Dynasty Portfolio Weekly. Everything is coming to the channel this week and maybe even some more surprise content because Ray and I, you never know. Last week we dropped two mock draft shows. Maybe we'll get some more stuff this week. So you never know what could be coming. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're tapping into the live shows and make sure you are following across all of our social platforms. But until next week, I am out from Ray and me. Thank you for tuning in to Wake Up with Ray G and we'll see you guys next week. We're out. D-Bro is a full man. Peace. Why'd you ruin my...